reasons we decided to do this video outside is because I probably shot some footage riding the Zealot with the stock wheels and the stock pulleys and we are going to install the brand new Backfire Cloud wheels and take some footage on the way back. Uh, I got the full kit from Backfire which included new uh, pulleys and belt motors. Uh, I'll show you, uh, I'll put some pictures in here and you'll see the differences. But I can tell you, if just looking at this, you see the cone shape, and I don't know if you can, the camera's picking it up, but these are solid versus the stock backfire ones are hollow. And they also, you know, keep the wheels out a little bit further because they are bigger than the, the regular wheels. So let me get to work taking these apart, and then I'll show you them cloud wheels right next to the backfire 96 millimeter wheels for comparison. differences between the backfire pulley and the cloud wheels pulley well here they are they're side by side try to hold them at the same angle. Uh, you can see the one on the left this one is the cloud wheel pulley the other one is the backfire pulley and you can see how one is shorter than the other and also if you look at this way when they go into the wheels and I've got a cool picture that I took really close of these inside the wheels and you'll see the difference Uh, one big difference that they, I've noticed playing with them yesterday was this is the cloud wheel backfire pulley. Put it in and it's it does the job but falls right out. Has no it does not rip at all. Let me get in here. Look at that. As soon as I let go, it falls right out. When you install the cloud wheel pulleys, which I'll do here. They're, you got it, they stop because they're, they're that tight. The tolerance is that tight. You push it in, you can almost feel it you can almost feel it click and it's in. It's not moving around. It's you can do this all day long. It's not it's not coming out. I, I really can't even get it off right now. The only way to get it off is to use the axle and kind of cheat that way. So I think the cl cloud wheel or backfire really put some thought into the pulleys. Uh, also uh, what I've seen on other, some people is one side of this belt will get rubbed because they're not using the cloud wheel pulley, they're using the backfire pulley. So it's rubbing the inside of the, uh, I guess this is the belt guide. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to show you? The motor covers. These are the motor covers of the, uh, with, that came with the cloud wheels. These are the original Zealot motor covers. You can see they are drastically different sizes. The whole location is, I think, the same, uh, but I think that's intentional because yeah, I think if you use this with the cloud wheel, I think this, this piece up here will rub. Uh, could you probably trim this and make it work? Yeah, you could probably. Oh. I'm gonna press on, put this together, and then we'll uh, do a comparison review.
real quick, let me show you why you can't use the original belt covers unless you trim them down. Here it's going to rub the tire, it's going to cut a groove in that tire. So could you use them? Yeah, but you'd probably hit, you'd have to trim them just a tiny bit, um, which I might do. Versus these, which is what they supply you, they don't touch at all. Um, so we're just going to use the, the ones that came with the kit for now. So initial impression, uh, it feels like if you've ever had a car or an older car and you replace the bushings, not the shocks, just the bushings, and then all of a sudden it felt like a new car. The rattles were gone, the little bumps felt almost flush, not quite flush, but almost, that's what it feels like. All right, this is what we're gonna go on the sidewalk here in a second and do a comparison so you can hear the sound and see what it feels like or on a cloud wheel. Especially these, I call these a sidewalk rail, these yellow rubble strips. Definitely much better. Stepped on the wheel, not the ground. So as promised, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the cloud wheel and the 96 millimeter uh, back part wheels. You can see they are pretty similar in size. Cloud wheel is just a hair bigger. It's definitely wider. Uh, and my impression, uh, I like it. I, I can just hold it in my hands here. I can feel this is softer than this. It uh, doesn't say what the durometer is on it, but uh, let's see on the back. It does not say. No, uh, but I, I can feel it. It's definitely softer. Uh, and being a heavier rider at 205, uh, I definitely can can squeeze this down and get uh, get flat tread on the bottom um, when I'm riding. Uh, so speaking of that, one thing that you will notice when you're going high speed is see that curvature there with the because of the texture of this, and you get a little bit of a little rumble. It's not loud. It's it doesn't it's it doesn't affect the stability, but you notice it's there uh, versus this because this stock wheel is completely flat. And so you also have a better contact patch with this. Uh, but like I said, being a heavier rider, I, I probably get more contact patch on this than, say, someone who's 150 because I'm able to squish the wheel down. At most speeds, call it uh, anything under 20 miles an hour, this wheel is shockingly stable. Zero wobbles, zero, zero moving around. It's just, it's planted and it feels good. At high speeds, this wheel is still just about as stable as this one. Um, though I, I would suspect if you tried to pump and carve at high speed, and I'm talking about mid 20s and up, that this would not be as stable. But usually when I'm doing 24 miles an hour, I'm not trying to pump and carve anyways. When I'm pumping and carving, I'm doing about 15 miles an hour. Uh, and in that case, both of these wheels have plenty of traction, plenty of grip. Uh, I would say this is definitely a better wheel for very high speed runs, if, if you're going to do that, uh, if that's your goal. But as far as comfort, can't beat this. This this is just uh, super comfortable. What I forgot to mention in the video when I went over the little uh, the edge of the sidewalk, those little yellow strips, when I go over it using this wheel, I have to be very careful. Uh, I have to actually slow down because the board will slide on me. When I go over it with this wheel, I didn't have to slow down. I just rolled over it. You hear it go, you hear when you go over it and it just makes a little brrrr sound, but you don't, you barely even feel it. Uh, you feel it with this one. The back end of your board will slide. 
on the G3 especially, I've almost fell a couple times. Um, but I can tell just going over it with this wheel a few times, I can go over it at speed. I went over it yesterday at I think uh, 10 or 15 miles an hour and the board didn't move at all, just rolled right over it. So uh, this, is, this is pretty good. I also did go through the grass with these. Yeah, it just ran right through it. Uh, I didn't buy these with the intention of being an all-terrain wheel anyways, even though they, they claim it can be. I bought these with just the intention of being comfortable going over cracks, bumps, rough road, debris. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Rock chips, little pebbles and all that stuff. When you ride on the road and you hit them with this and it tries to do the steamroller thing and you can hear them ricochet and jolt your board, etc. You feel it with this wheel. Uh, with the cloud wheel... You, you don't even, little tiny pebbles, you don't even feel them. You don't even notice them. Bigger ones, you feel it knock the wheel, but it doesn't move the board. It doesn't destabilize you. It's a lot more comfortable using the cloud wheel. All right. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I try to respond to everybody's questions as soon as I get a comment. So if you give me a question and I have an answer, just give me a minute and uh, I'll get to it. Thanks. Uh, one last thing I wanted to add. Don't forget to change your wheel settings in your uh, ESC uh, via your remote. Uh, just press and hold the power button on your board for 10 seconds and press and hold the power button on your remote for about 10 seconds and it'll put you in the configuration menu where you select miles per hour kilometers and in there you'll get to, you'll be able to select the different wheel sizes. I forgot to set the wheels to 105 initially, so it felt like the board was slower. So after I uh, changed the setting and put 105 wheels instead of 96 wheels, uh, the board seemed to have the correct speed and range and everything else.